Hi, Preston Spencer here with Minmo Reapers. On this week's episode, we're gonna be talking about decoy setup, turkey calls, and gear that we use out in the field. Here is a Hunt It uh, turkey vest. You can get this on Amazon. When I got this vest, I fell in love with it. There's so many options and places to put your things. It just blew my mind. And not only that, it was super light. It is everything that you look for in a hunting vest. Um, just the pockets, there's so many of them. You got spots to put your slate calls. I have one pocket that I have just a little can that I put all the mouth calls in. That's right here, very accessible. As you can see, I got all my mouth calls there. And what I'm doing is just getting all my stuff, getting it ready for turkey season. And here, as you can see, I have my slate call, my plaque call, and uh, it just slides in there. Just, just as perfect as can be. Close that up, but up here, more pockets. Over on this side, this bottom, I got my gobble locator call. Up here, it's pretty neat. It's a spot for your box call. And what I got here is no other than the four play box call, probably the best box call that, uh, that you can get. It's four sided and uh, it's a product that you definitely want to check out. So check out four play turkey calls. As I set it in here, slides in there just like that. You can tighten it up, so don't make no noise when you're walking through the woods. So what I'll do is closes up just like that. Now up here, what I did do here is you don't have to, but I put another pack up here. As you can see it closes up here. It's got a little webbing so you can add more storage space. Probably won't need it, but I did it just because I had it. And what I got here is all my Tacticam stuff, my batteries for my cameras, and that would go right there. Um, on this pocket here, I have all my sticks for my slate call. Um, here you can put your, your ammo. This very accessible, it's all, all right there. It has three buckles, very comfortable. It's got the back, very good cushion for your back on the inside. Two more pockets on the left side. Um, toilet paper is what I got in that one. Um, better to have toilet paper on you than not with you. Found that the hard way on this other side, another big pocket. So lots of, lots of options with this vest and the vest is just so extremely light. I've picked up a lot of hunting vests and the biggest thing is, there's two big things that I really didn't like about a hunting vest was they're heavy and the seat that usually comes with them are really small. This one has a real big seat, a lot of cushion, makes it very comfortable. Um, you got spots on both sides for your water bottles Another thing I like about this seat is when I unbuckle this, that it don't go nowhere and it's got magnets. So when you're running and gunning, you can leave this unlocked. What I like to do is when I'm carrying my camera gear, my camera arm will fit perfectly in here and I can lock it down. Now, on here, some people use their, put their decoys or plenty of room in here for that. I use this, uh, I put all my cameras, I put my camera in there and it fits perfect. You could probably fit a full bird in there. Uh, also has a rollout orange flag, so it's better safe than sorry. But, extremely light uh, the camo blends in really good and uh, if you're in the 
looking for a new hunting vest, I highly suggest hunt it as you can find them on Amazon and uh, you will not be disappointed. So go check them out. Now let's go to Mike Rue where he's gonna talk about decoy setup and the different types of turkey calls that you can use out in the field. Back in the mid thirties, ML Lynch developed the first mass produced box call. And since then they've been copied a thousand times, a thousand different ways with a lot of variations. Today, I'm gonna to show you a couple of variations and I'm gonna show you the go-to box call. So we're gonna start off with a call that's uh, called the half moon call. It's a homemade call. It's made by my buddy down in Arkansas, Andy Black. Gives you all the turkey sounds that you want. Does a good job. Another variation of the box call is the pocket box. Same thing, same, same idea. Now on the on the old-fashioned uh, box call, the the body is hewn out of one piece of wood. There's a couple of different uh, tone chambers in there. Basically, it's got two striking surfaces and a paddle, and it's a linear call. It's just, it's just one way or the other. The call I highly recommend, the most unique, the most ingeniously designed, and the most versatile box call ever made is the foreplay. With the foreplay, just like the other boxes, you've got you've got a paddle and two striking surfaces. <laughs> made out of two different woods, but watch this. You spin and rotate the paddle onto two new striking surfaces. That's a great Jake Cluck right there, folks. So in one call, and this call is not linear, the paddle even rotates a little bit on its pin so that you can manipulate this call into more turkey sounds than any other call ever. Four play box call, folks. It's the way you gotta go. Gonna look at, a, at the, what's called the diaphragm call. It's a pneumatic call. This call is held to the roof of your mouth with your tongue and you blow over it. There are two things you have to get over before you can be good with the diaphragm call. You have to get over the fact that it's going to tickle the roof of your mouth and you have to fight your gag process. The one thing you don't want to do is swallow your diaphragm call. Diaphragm calls are made of thick tape, a metal horseshoe, and latex reeds. The number, shape, and design of the reeds is what gives you the call. So when you're starting with a diaphragm call, get it in your mouth and get it comfortable. Your tongue pressing it to the roof of your mouth. And then blow. Try to get any kind of a sound you can get. Once you get that sound, you start refining it to make it sound like turkey sounds. Those are just putts and yelps of a mature hen. You have heard me say on every segment, the most important call you can learn to make is the cluck of the jake. For this one, you just press the call to the top of your mouth and just pop your tongue off as you breathe. Combine those calls, you will be successful. Folks, if you're not using the diaphragm call now, I recommend that you do because it frees up your hands for either the gun or the camera. Be versatile. You can practice with this call anytime. Put a diaphragm call on the console of your car. Anytime you're driving, pop the call in, do some practicing, and you too can end up sounding like a big old hen or a Jake.
how to use turkey decoys. A lot of debate. A lot of debate on whether decoys are necessary, whether they're ethical. Well, I believe anything you can do to give yourself an advantage in the turkey woods is something that, yeah, you're kind of obligated to do. So I'm going to tell you about turkeys. I'm going to tell you about how turkeys react to decoys. And I'm going to tell you that how you set up your decoys is the key. Here we are. I'm getting ready to start my 51st turkey season. If you can make a mistake in the turkey woods, I've made it. That having been said, that trial and error has led me to a process, to a program that is almost flawless. Now that's keeping in mind that you're hunting where turkeys live. If you're hunting where turkeys live, between the calling tips I've been giving you and how to set up these decoys, you are going to be successful. You have to get into the brain of a gobbler, which is about that big. It's just like, a, in the springtime, a gobbler's attitude is just exactly like a buck in the rut in the fall. Yes, breeding is on their mind, but they would much rather fight than mate. They are looking for that fight. And that's why the way I set up my decoys is so important. Let's go give that a look. So I have made some good calls and fooled the gobbler and made that gobbler believe that there's a Jake with his hen. And when he walks up, he sees exactly what he is expecting to see. I put my strutting Jake decoy in a mating posture right over a hen decoy with another hen decoy just to make it look natural. I'm going to blow your mind here, folks. I set my decoys up at 15 yards and I do not drop the hammer unless the birds are engaged with the decoys. Yeah, 15 yards. You've probably got a super full turkey choke in your 12 gauge uh, shells long enough to be used for table legs. I will tell you that my turkey gun has improved cylinder and I shoot sevens and a half. And at 15 yards, it's a killer. If you're shooting three and a half inch shells, super full choke at 15 yards, you're shooting a slug. Set your decoys up so that whenever the gobbler arrives, he sees exactly what he's expecting to see. And every morning this spring, when that gobbler saw a strutting Jake next to a hen, when he got close, the Jake ran off. Obviously this Jake is not gonna run off and that is just a stick in the eye to that big old gobbler. So he's gonna come right in and try to fight the Jake. I want you to take notice of how I've got the Jake's head painted. You've heard me say in the past many times, if their head is white, they wanna fight. So when that gobbler comes in and sees that strutting Jake with a hen with a chalk white head, the fight's on, the battle is on. I recommend that you do this. I recommend you set your decoys close. I recommend you adjust your choke and your shot size. And I promise if you do this all and whatever call you use, you learn the Jake cluck, you are going to fill a lot more tags than you ever have in the past. One other tip, when I'm hunting public ground, I never use a strutting Jake decoy. I use a standing Jake just for safety sake. Give you a quick look at. Yes, that is a real mounted hen. That's Monique, this is unique. She, I took her tail feathers off so I could get Tommy right in there behind him. Tommy has a chalk white head and a natural fan and that fan looks beat up on purpose. I want Tommy to look like a target. I want that to, uh, three-year-old bird to come in and just whip up on him and you're going to see a lot of video where my decoys just get destroyed okay that's your that's your decoy lesson let me know how it works for you Hey everybody, it's Abby Theroff with Midmo Reapers. And this month we're gonna be doing an exciting giveaway. So those of you that are already subscribed, you're already gonna be entered automatically into our little drawing that we're gonna have. 
And then for those of you that haven't subscribed to our channel, if you want to be entered to win, that's all you have to do. Go to our Minmo Reapers YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. We're going to give you guys about a month. So on May 7th, we're going to be doing this drawing. So stay tuned for the winner. Mm -hmm.